Bramall Lane, one of the most iconic English league stadiums which is home to none other than Sheffield United. Having been relegated with a total of 16 points from the Premier League last season, Sheffield United currently sits sixth in the championship. And with the departure of a big list of players including Cameron Archer, William Osula, Jaden Bogle and Ollie McBurney, Sheffield United need rebuilding to get them back to the Premier League. And that's where we come in and hope to try and bring Sheffield United back to the Premier League with the hope of winning multiple trophies along the way. Without further ado, let's kick on and start this Sheffield United rebuild. Make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you're new around here. And let's get into Season 1. So to start off Season 1, I have gone with the counter-attacking option for this Sheffield United team. I think, you know what, I want to change it up instead of using the standard like, you know, Gagan Press or Tick Attacker. So I think with the Sheffield United team, I mean, the way they normally play in real life, I think counter-attacking football probably is going to be a good shout. Obviously, as you can see, that is the default kind of lineup on the screen obviously we've got Gilchrist from Chelsea on loan Hammer Old Blaster Vinny Souza O'Hare Kiefer Moore up top I'm probably going to look just straight off the bat at a right winger maybe Brooks doesn't look that good when I'm looking at him straight away but obviously we don't really know if that's going to be the case so I'm going to go and do some scouting going to look at uh, probably a right winger maybe a keeper I'm not too sure we've got about 20 million to spend so that is going to be the squad for now and obviously we're going to go and see if we can sign some players and make some improvements so then guys the first signing of this Sheffield United rebuild is Nicholas Kuhn from Celtic. He is going to be slotting into the right wing position. I did have a look at the squad and I thought, you know, we needed a right winger. So I have paid the money and Nicholas Kuhn has come in from Celtic for £5.8 million. So this will be the lineup for the first season with the Sheffield United rebuild. Kuhn obviously was the only player that I did sign. I didn't actually go out and sign anyone else. Just because I didn't think we really need to sign anyone because this team for a championship side is actually a very strong side. Maybe the left back and the keeper, like I mentioned before, probably could get an upgrade. But I've decided to go with this team. Pretty solid. Kuhn obviously comes in from Celtic. Hopefully he can improve uh, the team going forward. So without further ado, we're going to jump straight into season one. So then guys, that completes season one with Sheffield United. And as you can see on the screen, we have finished fifth, which means we are in the playoffs. Now I'm hoping we can get to the playoff final, but as you can see, West Brom finished on 75, so did we. Stoke on 75 as well, and Middlesbrough 74. So it was actually really, really close in that playoff position. Unfortunately, we got knocked out by Wimbledon in the third round of the FA Cup, which is not really good to see. Wimbledon, obviously, I think they're in League 1 or 2. Obviously, not what you want to see in terms of the FA Cup. We all go and check the Carabao Cup now, and it's the exact same round. Round 3, we got knocked out by West Ham 2-1. So now, the all-important question is, did we manage to get to the playoff final and get promoted to the Premier League? Okay, guys, so as you can see, we beat West Ham 1-0. Well, 1-0 in the game, and then 3-2 on Agro, so it's a close game. Luton lost to Stoke, so that means we played Stoke in the final, and did we manage to win in the playoff final? And we did, 3-1 against Stoke, absolutely insane result. I mean, the team that we did have for a championship side was very good, so we are going straight back up into the Premier League after one season away. So without further ado, we're going to go jump into season two, and we're going to go spend a lot of money because we need to bolster this squad. Otherwise, we're just going to end up getting relegated again. So let's get into season two. Okay then, guys, the first signing of season two in the Premier League is going to be Kepa from Chelsea for £10.5 million. I needed a new keeper. He's only 30 years old. I mean, he could do for a couple of seasons in the Prem. I'm basically just trying to bolster the squad so we've got a good squad depth because right now the team's probably not good enough to be playing in the Premier League. So I just want to kind of build up a team of just players that we can use and then just carry on into the next season and hopefully stay up. So Kepa is the first player that we have signed in season two. The next signing for Sheffield United is going to be Hector Bellering from Real Betis. He is going to be slotting in at right back. He's only 30 years old. I only paid 5.5 5 million for him. I think he's just going to be a good addition just to get this first Premier League season underway and just to keep us up. And hopefully next season, we can try and look for some other options. But Bellerin is the first, uh, the second signing of this rebuild in season two of Sheffield United. And I'm hoping he can come in and just be solid for us for a couple of seasons. So Bellerin, second signing of the window. Nuno Tavares is the third player that we have brought in to Sheffield United. 9.2 million pound has been spent. The new left back is going to come in straight into the lineup to bolster that defense with Bellerin. And we're also going to go out and try and get a center back because we actually are running low on different rotational options. So he comes in at left back. Really, really happy with that. The defense is now set. Obviously, just still going to be looking for that center back and then probably going to go out and try and get a big name striker to go up top to try and get some goals in season two. That is the latest signing 
signing for Sheffield United. Third signing of the summer window, Philippe Andrade is coming in from PSV for 6 million. A young, highly rated centre back. He is only 19, 74 overall already. One of my scouts recommended him. So I was like, you know what? I'll take the young player, snap him up and then bring him straight into the starting lineup. So hopefully he can improve over the coming seasons. But that is going to be the back line completely finished now. I've got a little bit of money, a little bit of money left in the tank. So I'm going to probably try and go for another striker, maybe, or a centre mid. I'm not too sure. I think probably a striker is the best option. So without further ado, let's just try and get a new striker at the club. We have another signing and it is another centre back because I did look at the squad and we didn't really have much centre back coverage in terms of rotational players. So Reese Oxford is the next signing for Sheffield United. A massive signing. He used to be one of the best future stars of a career mode like player to use. So we've actually signed him from the Bundesliga. He is going to be coming in as probably a backup centre back to be honest. Five million pounds. You can't complain for a backup. So he has joined Sheffield United and we're going to probably make it around two or three more signings because we really need some more squad depth in this team. So Reese Oxford is the latest signing. Connor Barron is the latest signing. Rangers to Sheffield United for £9.5 million. Pounds. He is going to be playing in centre mid. The youngster, well, he's not that young. He's only 24, but he's going to be going into the centre mid role. Again, a, probably another rotational backup option because we didn't really have many. So he is the latest signing. And I think we've got enough money to make one more deal in this transfer window. So then, guys, that is the end of the season two transfer window. I just wanted to quickly do a overview of what we have sold or who we've brought in. Tavares obviously being one of the big ones, 9.2 million in from Ren to play left back. A couple of players like Davies, Hackford, Marsh going out on loan and I've sold a couple of players as well. Uh, Norrington Davies, Sliman and uh, also Callum have gone out on permanent deals. And as you can see, Connor Barron, Andrade, Oxford, Kepper and Bellerin, all the players that have come in. I didn't manage to get a striker in the end because I just didn't have enough money left over. So we're going to have to do with the players that we have, Brewster, Campbell. I mean, Campbell actually played pretty well towards the end of the season so i'm gonna trust him for this season so without further ado we're gonna jump into season two now and see if we can stay in the premier league that concludes season two and as you can see on the screen sheffield united finished 13th in their first season back in the premier league i'm actually not too worried about that 47 points in the first season back i think is a good start to this rebuild and a good start back to life in the premier league unfortunately there was no cup run in terms of the fa cup man united beat us 3-1 in the fourth round of the fa cup and unfortunately, we lost to Aston Villa at 2-1 in the third round of the Carabao Cup. So no trophies again this season, but that is fine. We are aiming just to stay in the Premier League. And after a good season, I really do think we can build on that now and carry on into season three. So again, I just wanted to see the main men, Hammer, Campbell and Kuhn once again. And O'Hare as well, to be fair to him. Again, a really good season for these players. I really do like uh, Kuhn on that right wing. Campbell up top has actually surprised me as well. Only 72 rated and he's banging in goals left, right and center. 14 in the Premier League, which is really good. 15 in the Premier League for Hammer, and Kuhn got 10. So, without further ado, it's a really good start back to life in the Prem. We're going to move on into Season 3. The first signing of Season 3 is a massive one. £24.6 million for John Duran from Aston Villa. He's going to be our main striker for this season. A big money move to Sheffield United. He's going to be our main number nine. And I have pretty much spent nearly all the wage, all the transfer budget, which is kind of annoying. But I needed to improve in terms of getting goals. I think John Duran can be the man to do that. So he is the first signing. I might not be able to sign anyone else, to be honest. I might try and look at bringing in a backup player. But we just have run out of money because we didn't really get we only got like 35 million budget so that is just unfortunate so i'm going to try and do some scouting and see what positions we could probably improve on or get any backup players in so that is going to be the first signing of season three so then guys the transfer window has closed for season three and this is going to be the team that we are going to be using for season three an unchanged lineup apart from john duran coming in up top to try and get us the goals this season obviously on the bench we have got a couple of rotational players like Campbell, who actually impressed me last season. Still got Brewster, Gilchrist, Oxford as well, and Allblaster. So the team is looking good. We obviously finished 13th last season. Now with the addition of a big number nine, hopefully we can climb the table and hopefully finish higher up the table. So without further ado, guys, we're going to jump straight into season three. Okay then, guys, this is the end of season three. Unfortunately, we've dropped down to 15th. We just about survived in the Premier League if I'm honest not really sure what had gone on this season but I mean it's just not really an improvement is it it's obviously not 
what you want to see but we're going to try and see if we can sign some more players obviously i don't really have much of a transfer budget so we only managed to sign duran up top might have to sell some players to then buy some better players so i'm unfortunately just in a bit of a situation where i need a bit more money so we're going to try and get maybe i just think we have to sell some more players to then get better players so that is just going to be a season to forget to be honest 15th we stayed in the prem which is obviously what we want to keep doing we really need to push on next season try and finish in the top half so we're going to jump straight into season four the first signing of season four for sheffield united is here and andre santos is joining from chelsea the youngster is going to be playing in central midfield for us and he is coming in for a whopping 31.6 million pounds i just think we didn't have enough rotational options in the center, central mid role and like players like souza is getting a bit older so santos is going to come in and replace uh either Baron or Souza are probably going to play Baron with him because they're both a bit younger but he's going to come in really really happy with that we've got a lot of money left over so I'm going to try and sign a new central attacker midfielder and maybe a left winger so Santos is the first signing in season four the next player we have signed is Luke Harris nine million pounds from Fulham to Sheffield United he's going to be playing in the center attacker mid role really really good youth uh young prospect coming from Fulham like I said he's going to be starting for us in center attacker mid because O'Hare we did actually sell him he was 29 so i thought you know what out of the old in with the new and he is going to come in luke harris 75 overall to play center attacker mid for sheffield united All right then guys i have decided to sell souza for 17 and a half million pounds he is like 28 29 now i've just brought in andre santos he was going to replace him i thought i'd take the money while i can and improve the squad in other areas that we need to improve on so i've actually decided to sell vinicius souza 17 and a half million to brentford i think it's a good price but what like he is now he's he was just going to be a back up so i'm going to try and invest that money or reinvest that money into a different position so that is the latest player that we have sold andre santos is the replacement who we just bought previously so i'm going to try and maybe get myself a left winger i think i'm going to bring in hammer back into the central midfield play with santos so hopefully we can try and sign some more players and i'll show you guys once we do we have gone out and signed a new right back. Spence is coming in from Tottenham for 9.5 million. I'm going to give Bellerin one more season at right back. He is 33 now. So I wanted to bring in Spence as the rotational. And then next season, he will start ahead of Bellerin. Obviously, Bellerin isn't going to be here for much longer, probably another season and then be the backup option. So Spence has come in, probably got enough money to make one more big signing. I'm probably going to go for another centre mid or a left winger. I'm not too sure, but Spence is in. We have brought in a young talent in Van Axel Dongen from PSG. He's going to be playing a left wing for us. I might have him as a rotational option to start with with Hammer. He's actually having a really, really good season or he's having a really good time. This whole rebuild, to be honest, he's been our, probably our best player apart behind Kuhn. So Van Dongen has come in. I'm probably going to keep him as maybe a, a backup option for now. But I bought him. He's only, well, we've only paid 7.6 million. So it's actually not too bad. So he's going to come in, hopefully bring him in in the next couple of seasons to play. So for now, that is probably going to be the last transfer. I might have enough just for another backup player to bring in. But we're going to have to wrote, like really assess and see if we have enough money to bring in someone else. The final transfer in season four is here. Sissoko is coming in as another left wing option. I think between him and Van Dongo, I'm going to play them as the left wingers. And I bring Hammer back into the central midfielder role just because I think that he's probably better suited than centre mid. But £5 million for a backup left winger, I can't complain. But like I said, that is going to be the last signing of this transfer window. We've had a lot of business done. So hopefully we can try and improve and hopefully creep in to get a top 10 finish. So without further ado, let's get into season four and see where we end up. That is the end of season four. And unfortunately, we're still just floating around that 14th, 13th, 15th spot. 40 points we ended on. We nearly... I mean, nearly got relegated again. But again, we've stayed in the team. We've stayed in the Premier League. I think the squad is just not. It's, there's just not enough quality. I don't think all around. I think we need to sign a couple of like younger star players that are going to grow into better players. Because I think we've kind of you know signed a couple of older players where their ratings aren't that great, and the team just isn't really improving. Obviously, we did sign a couple of youngsters in the last window at the start of the season, and we've actually you know we. We're just staying in the same place, aren't we? So I'm going to reassess the transfers that I make for the next season. I don't think we actually finished anywhere in the cup. I'm going to go down to like the lower rounds because that's normally where we get knocked out. As you can see, Huddersfield beat us in the FA Cup 3-1. And in the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the second round to Norwich on penalties. So not really what you want to see, unfortunately. I'm going to go check the player stats for the season. 
Duran and Kuhn and Hemmer once again. These guys are really helping us. I mean, to be fair, with, with what we've got, these three are really, really uh, holding the fort together, as you would say. So we're going to dive into season five now. I'm going to really need to look at try and see if we can bring in someone a bit better. Um, maybe a new goalkeeper because Kepa's getting a bit older. And I might have to uh, bolster that defense. So that was season four. We're going to move on into season five. So the end of the transfer window in Season 5 has come to an end. Koulibaly and Reese Oxford were the players that left Sheffield United. Reese Oxford wanted to leave and I didn't really use this Koulibaly guy, so he has gone. Wesley from PSV, a new left winger, £36 million. We did sign him and we sent Sissoko the other way with the money just because he wasn't that good for us. And Wesley seems like a really, really good player, so I have decided to go for him. And we also have gone for Czech. Now, not Petr Cech, uh, Philip Cech. He is actually coming in for 10.7 million and Kepa has gone to Fulham. Kepa's now 33 and he's, his stats are going down. So I brought in a younger keeper. As you can see, he's only 20 years old and he's already 79 rated. So he's going to be a really, really good keeper for us. But that is the transfer window. Not too much business going on, to be honest with you. But I don't mind that at all. So we're going to dive into season five now and hopefully we can try and improve on our poor kind of, well, I wouldn't say poor run. We just haven't really progressed much since we've been back in the Premier League. So, Season 5 is upon us. Let's see how we get on. This will be the squad for Season 5. We've got Czech in goal, Spence at right back still. Burrows is coming at left back because Tavares, I just wasn't really seeing much improvement from him. Hammer, uh, Hamer and Santos in the midfield. They have been really, really good for me so far. So has Luke Harris. And the front three of Kun. Duran and Wesley I mean look at that all 83 rated now and they're only what I know Kun's 29 but Duran is 25 and Wesley is 24 so they are like really really good so far together but we just need to make sure we can improve on last season which hopefully we can do so let's just dive straight in to season five well there you go guys we have finished in the top half of the Premier League table we have finished ninth in the season massive improvement from last year obviously you know the past couple of seasons we've had in the Prem we've just been staying in the same positions like 13th 14th 15th so it is nice to actually finish in the top half and I think the signings and the squad as a, as a overall kind of improved within this season and obviously as you can tell we have finished ninth so it must have done unfortunately no luck in the FA Cup we actually lost to Lincoln on penalties in round three and I think this is the furthest we've been in the Carabao Cup this year, uh, this save. But I think Man United again beating us 1-0. I mean, you can't really complain because we're quarterfinals in the Cup. But the main thing is that we did finish in the top half of the Premier League. We have finished ninth. And that's a really, really good kickstart, if you want to say, in terms of Premier League life. Because we've just been stagnating in the bottom half of the table. So... I'm going to quickly go and check the player stats from this season and see who got the most goals. And are you surprised? Look at that. Kuhn, Duran, Heimer, Santos and Harris all getting the goals. I mean, they are some of the best players. Duran, 83 rated now, only 25. 84 for Kuhn. Santos, 82, is only 25. Luke Harris, 77, he's only 24. So really impressive season once again for the same like sort of three or four players. Nevertheless, really big improvement from last season, finishing ninth. We're going to take that into season six. The first signing of season six is going to be Bashir Humphreys on a free transfer. I actually had him on my shortlist for the past two seasons to bring in as a centre-back cover. And this season, in season six, he's actually gone to a free agent. So I'm just going to bring him in as a backup player just to have in the squad because we're really lacking in centre-back options. So for a free transfer, I mean, I can't complain. So he is the first player that we have signed in season six. The next signing is a big one for us. Connor Hansen has come in to play right back 30.8 million pounds from Chelsea. Now, obviously, Hector Bellerin has actually retired and Spence is probably not as good as we want. As you can see, Hansen is already better and he's way younger than Spence. So Spence will be the backup and Hansen will be the starting right back for us this season. We have another signing, guys, and it is going to be a left back. Now, Tavares hasn't really impressed me. He has turned into the backup left back and the current left back that we have it just isn't really that good so we've brought in 
the Costa from Fulham for 7.3 million pounds. Now he's going to be coming in and starting straight away. And he's only 75 or 76 overall, but he's only 20 years old. So he's got a lot of time to improve. And I think within this team, it's quite a young team now. So I think he's going to really mix in well and improve the team. So he is going to be the last signing of this new summer window. We signed a couple of players and I really think now we can push on into those European places, maybe a conference league or Europa League place, because I think this squad is really, really good. And we've got a lot of depth now. So we're going to quickly go over the overview of what the team's going to look like for season six. So then guys, as you can see on the screen, this is the team for season six. Now, again, last season we've really improved and I think this squad seriously can push for like a conference or even just maybe slightly a Europa League place. So check and goal, Hansen, the new right back, still got the same set about pairing and De Costa, the new left back. Hamer, Hammer, or I think it's Hamer, how you say it. Harris and Santos have been doing really, really well for me. Duran has been excellent, probably one of the best players. Actually, not the best player, the second best player behind Kuhn, who has still been here since season one. Wesley on the left as well. He's really good. He's really improving as well. I mean, look at the stats already. And he's only 83 rated and only 24 years of age. And obviously on the bench, we still have a couple of rotational players in like Tavares, Humphreys, Spence, Burrows, All Blaster, Campbell, Van Dongen and Baron. So that is the team for season six. And I'm really hoping to improve from our top 10 finish, finish ninth last season, which again is obviously a really good finish considering where we were in the seasons before. So without further ado, let's jump straight into season six. I don't know if I'm dreaming here, but Sheffield United have finished third in the Premier League. I mean, we've had two or three really good seasons now, finishing third in the, in the Premier League, and then that secures Champions League football for next season. A massive improvement from the first three seasons. The, the past three seasons have been really good. We finished, what, ninth, and then we finished again in the top 10, and this time we have finished third. The squad is really gelling now, and it's really coming together. We all will also check, did we manage to win any of the cup? And we won the FA Cup. We beat Wolves 2-1 in the final. I mean, what a cup final that is. Wolves against Sheffield United in the FA Cup final. Final. That is insane. How did we get there? We beat United 3-1, beat Leeds 3-2, and then we're going to check the Carabao Cup now. Didn't get to the final. Brighton, West Ham, and the Carabao Cup. I mean, the two cup finals were teams that weren't really like a top six team. So, I mean, we didn't obviously win the Carabao Cup, but I mean, look at that. The FA Cup 2-1 against Wolves. I will take that every day of the week. And finishing third in the Premier League. What a season that is in season six. Now, hopefully we can get a lot of money and build on this score because now we've got the task of Champions League football, which is going to be a big ask because we're gonna have to really bolster the squads and improve we want to even try and compete in the champions league obviously it's got the new format where it's the league system so we might actually be able to try and sneak our way through into the knockout stages so without further ado we're gonna go jump straight in to season seven our first big signing of the season seven transfer window is here and diamande has joined from Bournemouth, who is going to be playing at centre-back for us. An absolutely great signing, 67.5 million. I think that is the biggest transfer fee that we have had on this rebuild so far. And Diamandi is going to be coming in to play centre-back alongside Andre. He is going to go straight in, because the other centre-back that we have is like 33 now, and he's going down in the ratings. So I'm going to literally put him on the reserves or the bench, and we're going to swap him out. Obviously, I've got a lot of players on this shortlist right now. One player I am interested in, or well, the position I'm interested in, is left wing. Gordon, Savino, and Martinelli are the players I really want to get, because our left winger has actually decided... If I can quickly show you, Wesley has decided to submit a transfer request. So Arsenal have and Forrest have actually both bidded for around 52 and 53 million pounds to sign Wesley. So he will be leaving because he wants to leave. So I'm going to use that money and bring in someone else. So hopefully we can get either Martinelli or Gordon into the team. A massive, massive signing. I told you that I wanted to bring in a new left winger. We were going to go after Martinelli or Anthony Gordon, but... I have decided to go for someone else. He was a bit younger, well, much younger than the other two. Due from Leicester City. I think he actually plays, or he was at PSG at some stage in this rebuild. I'm not too sure what team he plays for in real life. If you know, let me know in the comments below. But we have brought him in to play left wing. 86 overall, a massive upgrade from Wesley. And he is going to go straight into that position at left wing. 76.2 million pounds paid. We also have a lot more money left over to bring in some other players. So I'm hopefully going to bring in maybe a new right back or backup right back or a backup striker. Obviously, we've got 
the Champions League now, so I need to try and bolster the squad so we can compete in all competitions. The next signing is in. Alex Scott is coming from Lazio. £25 million pounds plus. Hema or Hammer is going the other way. He is 33 now and he is going down in the ratings. I'll tell you that. He's already down to an 80 rated and Alex Scott is an 84. So I think it's ideal just to bring in someone younger who can go straight into the midfield to replace him. Unfortunately, Gustavo was a really good player for us, but he was just, I mean, I checked the team and he's going down and he's just going down very quick. So I thought I'd try and cash in and take the money while I can. So the midfield duo of Alex Scott and Andre Santos is going to be really, really good for us in the upcoming season. Obviously, I'm probably going to have to try and look at getting someone else in. We have spent a lot of money so far on the squad. So we're going to quickly go into the transfer market again and see if we can get anyone else. So this is what the team's going to be looking like going into Season 7. Check in goal. Hansen, Diamandi, Andrade, De Costa are the back line. Alex Scott, the new signing, alongside Santos with Harris in front. And we've got Duran, Kun and Due on the left-hand side. And that is going to be the team, a really strong team. Obviously, could probably do with upgrading the left-back and maybe Harris as well. He hasn't really upgraded as much as I can, but he actually has been playing well for us. So I can't really complain. And then we've also got the bench, which is not really that big in terms of ratings. It's just like real, just like squad depth. There's not much there. I'm just kind of gambling on just the main team staying fit and winning stuff for us. So without further ado, we're going to jump straight into season seven. And we're going to go see how we get on. I'm hoping we can try and compete in the Champions League. I think this team is pretty good, to be honest with you, especially that front three. That is amazing. The back line's pretty good. And the two in midfield are really, really good, high-rated talents in real life as well. So, so let's crack on with Season 7. Oh my god, guys. End of Season 7. And we have managed to come second and only on goal difference behind Chelsea. That is unbelievable. We have really, really improved once again this season. I mean, look at that. Chelsea 71, Sheffield United 71. It does mean we will play Champions League football next season. And that is something that I really am keen on carrying on. But I mean, oh, it's just so unlucky. Chelsea on goal difference, winning the league. Sheffield United just short. I want to go and check and see where we ended up in the Champions League for the first time. Obviously, this season we were in the Champions League. So I'm going to go and check where we finished. Oh god, right. So we we actually managed to get out of the league phase and get to the round of 16, but we got absolutely battered by Real Madrid 6-2 on aggregate. So, I mean, it just shows that maybe we are just quite far away from that type of success in the Champions League because Real Madrid absolutely battered us. Where did Real Madrid actually end up finishing in the thing? So they won the quarterfinals, lost to Dortmund in the semifinals. Okay, so quite interesting. I want to go and check our cup run if we actually managed to do anything in terms of the FA Cup. I can't really see our name here anywhere. Oh, well, wow. round five. Forest beat us on penalties, which is quite annoying. Again, I keep losing on penalties in these cups. And again, in the Carabao Cup, Man United beat us again on penalties. So it's another team beating us on pens. Like, it, it just keeps happening. I mean, we were unlucky this season in terms of the domestic cups. Champions League, I mean, first time in it. And Real Madrid absolutely battered us in the round of 16. So hopefully next season, we can try and improve that finish of the round of 16. And I mean, in terms of the league, finishing second on goal difference is a massive improvement. So hopefully next season, we can go on and try and win the league now. So we are heading in to season eight with Sheffield United. I really do think we can try and win the league next season and hopefully try and get another cup in there as well while also trying to go um, try and go further in the Champions League if we can. So we're going to dive into season eight now and we're going to have to try and spend a lot of money to bolster the squad and improve if we want to try and win some trophies. Wow, season eight, what a start. We have £179 million to spend and I'm going to make sure I spend all of it because we need to improve this squad if we want to get to that Premier League title and Champions League champion status. So, 179 million to spend. Let's go dive into the transfer window. First signing of season eight, and it is a massive, massive signing in terms of the squad positioning. Gruda is coming in for 85 million pounds. He's going to be playing in the center attack and mid role, and he's going to be replacing Luke Harris in that role. I felt like Luke Harris is probably one of the only players left in this squad and the left back, of course, that just wasn't higher rated than what everyone else is looking like. So he is going to come in and he's going to replace Luke Harris at center attack and mid. And the next signing is going to be a left back upgrade. Lewis Hall is coming in for all, from Valencia for 64.5 million pounds. We needed a new left back and we've gone out and got one. Lewis Hall, really good player. Uh, obviously now, because we're eight seasons in, he's obviously not class as a youth player anymore but he will go straight in at left back and now we've got a really really solid team and i think we've got enough to challenge and hopefully win the league this season so this is going to be the team for season eight and this is an absolutely insane team 
The back line has changed because Lewis Hall has come in to play at left back. And then we've got Gruda in at center attacking mid as well. So, I mean, this team looks insane. Duran has been one of the best strikers I've used so far in FC25. Uh, with Kun as well, he has been here from the first season. He's 31 now, probably got another season or two in him. Probably just this one, but hopefully we can win the league this season. And with this team, I mean, I don't see why we can't push on and try and win something. The league or the Champions League, or why not both? Or, 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 or the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup as well. I don't mind. But this team on paper looks really good. Hopefully we can try and win some trophies this season and then try and win that Premier League title and that all-important Champions League trophy. Right then, guys, before we get into season eight unfortunately lewis hall got injured in the first game and he is out for six months so i didn't have a backup left back nuno tavares is the backup and he's 77 rated he's not good enough so what i did was i offered barco uh, lewis with barco and 12 million and they've said yes he's injured for six months he's not going to play all season so i had to improvise and barco's come in and he's going to go straight into the team and he's pretty much the same or if not better than lewis hall so I had to improvise and we managed to secure a new left back instead of having to play Nuno Tavares for the season who's not exactly a starter. So now we can progress with season eight and hopefully we can try and win some trophies. Unfortunately for Lewis Hall, he's out for the season. We have finally done it guys. In season eight, Sheffield United have won the Premier League title. It's finishing on 79 points, beating Man City. We have finally won the Premier League. Really, really good season from Sheffield United there. Now, can we go and see if we did manage to win any of the Cups? Judging by the look of that, we didn't get very far. We got knocked out in the sixth round to Newcastle in the FA Cup. We actually managed to win the Carabao Cup for the first time on this rebuild of Sheffield United. 3-1 win against Brighton. Now, that takes us up to a Premier League, an FA Cup and a Carabao Cup in this rebuild which is absolutely insane oh we've actually made it to the Champions League final we're playing against barcelona 29th of may 2032 to make it if the if we can win this we win the quadruple in season eight of the sheffield united rebuild what an achievement that could be but obviously we're gonna play this game and see if we can win the champions league so then guys this is gonna be the lineup for the champions league final check and goal hansen diamande andrade barco scott santos Ruda. Kun, Duran, and Due. Look at that front three. 90 rated, 90 rated, and 88 rated. Obviously, Kun's gone down a rating, I think. I think he was actually 89 at one point, but he obviously is getting a bit older. But Duran, the man, he has actually been insane for us in this rebuild. He's probably one of the best players I've used on career mode so far in FC25. But nevertheless, this is it. Time to play the Champions League final against Barcelona. If we win this, we win the Champions League, and we win the quadruple in Season 8. So let's see if we can win the Champions League. So then, guys, we are here at the Champions League final. Andre Santos leading out Sheffield United. We've got a big ask against Barcelona here. Obviously, one of the best teams in the world. And hopefully, Sheffield United can beat them to win the Champions League for the first time on this rebuild. Sheffield United players there lining up. I'm going to see how we get on. Here come Barcelona now charging through. We have to try and get onto the line. And it's, oh my God, how Barcelona not scores. He's put it wide. Here comes Barco now down the line. Plays a great ball down to Gruda. He plays in John Duran. Duran with the shot. It's saved by the keeper. Ball played through. Duran. Duran's through. Duran. Saved by the keeper. Andre Santos now plays the ball into Kuhn. Gonna wait for that run of Santos. He's making the run now. Santos is through. It's Andre Santos. Can he get the shot away? It's a goal. Andre Santos, the captain, gets the first goal. In the early stages of the second half. That's a lovely 1-2 with him and Kuhn. I thought he was going to go down for a penalty. But the shirt was getting pulled. He's actually prevailed and put it into the top corner. Outside of the boot. Keeper's gone the wrong way. And it's into the roof of the net. And Andre Santos has put Sheffield United 1-0 up. Inside this Champions League final. Ball played down the line to Kuhn. Can he whip the ball in? Duran is there. Duran with the overhead kick. Ball played over the top. John Duran, the man. John Duran. Oh, it's a great save on the attack. Sanchez, great tackle from Hansen, the young right back. Cool now. Plays it in. Oh, we're not going to get on the end of that, but surely this is going to be the end of the game, ref. Barcelona is out of time to get the ball off the pitch. Sheffield United have won the Champions League final. We've managed to win the Champions League in Season 8, and that completes the quadruple in season eight i can't believe it andre santos with the goal to score and win only one nil but you have to take that every day of the week we have actually just gone and won the champions league with sheffield united 
an absolutely insane end to this rebuild. I mean, we've just won the quadruple. I think that's a great way to end this video. I hope you guys did enjoy this rebuild because I had a really, really enjoyable time making it. I mean, shout out to John Duran, by the way. What a player. He absolutely turned into a beast within those six or seven seasons he was with us. Absolutely insane player. Really, really happy with the progression of this rebuild. And we're going to watch Sheffield United and Andre Santos lift this Champions League trophy. Amazing, amazing season. The quadruple and the Champions League trophy is Sheffield United's. Thank you guys for watching this video. Leave a like, comment and subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.